All right, I'm gonna try and keep this video short and sweet. Otherwise, you'll be waiting till September to get your iMac with each passing minute because right now, you're not able to get these iMacs until July at the time of recording this video. Now, you're probably having an internal fight on whether you should get the 1299 model or the 1499 model. Here's the simple answer. Just get the 1299 model. Now, if you're in a rush and just want my recommendation, go to this part of the video. But for those who want an explanation of why the 1299 model, let's continue. So don't waste your money on the 1499 version unless you're looking for this one thing. And I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but it's the colors. So yellow, orange, and purple. If you want those three colors, there's no way around it. You have to get the 1499 model. Now, you may be asking yourself, what about the extra GPU core, the extra two USB-C ports, the ethernet that comes standard, or the touch ID that comes standard? I'm here to tell you that you don't really need that stuff and you can get it for much cheaper on the 1299 model. And the keyboard option is a bit hidden, but I do believe the touch ID is quite useful because right now in front of me, I have the base model, but I still have the touch ID version. So most of my audience demographic is of age where you've probably done enough shopping and dealt with enough sales to realize this so-called marketing trick. If you are a sales or marketing expert, please put the official terminology or marketing campaign down in the comments below. But basically Apple is presenting you both options side by side where one seems clearly better than the other since the cheaper one doesn't come with it. Think of it like trims for cars. They always present you with the top trim, but for the value of your money, the base trim with separate add-ons goes a long way. Mm. I mean, this really only makes sense with German cars because economy people like me just get bang for your buck. Anyway, the reality is, is that the 1299 model is just as capable as the 1499 model. Let's talk about the differences you may have noticed. So that extra GPU core, you won't notice that much of a difference in real world performance. The extra two USB-C ports, well, I would say. Hello? Um, do you mind if I call you back in like 20 minutes? All right, sounds good. All right, bye. Make sure to uh, silence your phones. Anyway, so the two extra USB-C ports, I would say just get yourself a 30 to $40 USB-C hub off Amazon and you can get more than just those extra two USB-C ports on the 1499 model. This one has three regular USB-A ports, a micro and a full-size SD card slot, a USB-C port and an ethernet jack. And I think this was like 40 bucks. Plus you still have that extra Thunderbolt port on the back if you wanna add another hub on top of that to have two. Now, if you want some really insane read and write speeds or just want more USB-C ports, then you can invest in a Thunderbolt dock. But what about the ethernet that comes standard on the 1499 model? Well, you can just get the base model and just upgrade it for an extra 30 bucks. Even though you should ask yourself the question, when was the last time you ever used ethernet? So will it even bring value to you? Apple's Wi-Fi cards are some of the best in the industry, so maybe just upgrade your router. The Touch ID that comes standard on the 1499 model, well, just get the base model and pick it up for an extra $50, or even better, get the numpad for $80. Now, I love Apple, and this channel knows this, but I can't defend Apple on this one. It's the Magic Mouse 2. I don't really care about the whole charging on the bottom. That's the least of my worries. It's the actual functionality of this mouse that I think is an abomination. If this mouse gives you frustration like me, I would pick up a Bluetooth mouse or a combination of your hub. Just use a USB-C, a um, dongle to connect to your device but that's just me. I really don't like this Apple Magic Mouse 2. It's so frustrating to use. Um, on top of that, I would also just suggest if you have the money to splurge on the trackpad, I would also recommend using this because this is just, in terms of the gestures, it works better than the Magic Mouse 2. <sighs> I don't know who created this thing. I, I don't wanna speak about this anymore. But if you already have a pre-existing Apple Magic trackpad, just go ahead and leave that. Sorry, I just saw a bird dive bomb off my roof. Anyway, um, if you already have a pre-existing Magic trackpad, I would say don't upgrade it. Just use your one that you already have. It'll work flawlessly. So do keep that in mind. 
But to be completely honest, I wish Apple would give us the choice between wanting the Magic Mouse or the Magic Trackpad for the same price. Now with the accessories aside, you can see how much value you can bring with saving those extra $200. But let's talk about tech specs. So eight gigabytes versus 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now I've already made a video on this, but I'll keep it short. If you want a more detailed answer, check up the video up here or here. I've never done it before, so it's gonna be up there somewhere. So this iMac is a stationary machine, so it makes sense to actually put your money towards the 16 gigabytes of RAM. Why? Well, usually I'd argue that you should stick with eight gigabytes of RAM and invest in the storage first. But since this isn't moving, you can easily add external storage for much cheaper while the RAM can't be upgraded or expanded upon no matter what. But wait, wait, wait. What about the performance? What about that extra GPU core? That's gotta mean something, right? And it does, if you wanna tell your family and friends that you have eight cores, by all means. Sure, your car may go zero to 60 in five seconds, but my car goes zero to 60 in 5.1 seconds. See how ridiculous that sounds? You're pretty much buying it for the spec sheet. I've used both versions of the seven GPU and eight GPU versions, and you can't really tell a difference unless you're concerned about numbers in a benchmark, or if you wanna shave a few seconds off of rendering or processing. Both processors get the full eight CPU cores, which is what most modern programs take advantage of. So don't stress or worry about having one less GPU core. Apple is just trying to make you feel bad, but I'm here to tell you that seven GPU cores is fine. Um, there is some talks about iFixit in terms of their X-ray, that the base model comes with one fan and then the upper model comes with two fans. I don't think either fan is really going to matter. I think it's really just they're, I think in terms of Apple's business sense, they're probably just putting in that second fan to see how it would perform for more powerful chips. And in terms of r and I don't wanna get into this whole topic, but I think Apple's just producing it in advance for their more professional lineups in the future. What would be my recommended build if I hit you with too much information just now? If you are in good faith, buy off the educational store because you get a flat $100 off the $14.99 model, which drops it down to $13.99, which actually has some value to it. The $12.99 model comes to $12.49, which in terms of value is still saving money compared to the $13.99 model. Now, Apple doesn't verify a .edu email or anything. You'll just have to sleep for the rest of your life knowing you bought from the educational store when you should have bought from the retail store. But saving money is money, so do as you please. Whatever your conscience decides, pick that. For my global audience, unfortunately, the educational store is only available in select countries, so you can throw a rock as hard as you can in the sky and hope it hits Apple's headquarters. But I don't want anyone to get hurt. I just want to make that clear before Apple sends their legal team to me and I just but seriously, Apple, this should be available in majority of countries around the world. Now, for the sake of this recommendation, I'll use the full retail price. So first, if you want orange, purple, or yellow, like I said before, you have to get the $14.99 model. But if you're okay with blue, pink, green, or silver, select $12.99 and let's continue. So you're gonna have to scroll down to change to another keyboard. Here, Apple provides a ton of options and you can select the Touch ID version of your keyboard of choice for an extra $50. If you want the numpad as well, throw in the extra 30 on top of the 50. Personally, I'd get the Magic Trackpad for an extra $50 because the Magic Mouse, like I said before, is just, just bad mouse. You can pick up a Bluetooth one off Amazon or your local retail store like Walmart or Target, at least here in the States. If you already have a pre-existing trackpad, just leave it at the base, don't worry about that. I wouldn't spend the extra $50 unless you want the matching colors of the trackpad with the rest of your accessories. Now, with the main accessories out the way, I do believe eight gigabytes of RAM is fine for 99% of people. There are people who will say you need to upgrade for future-proof or you just absolutely need 16 gigabytes of RAM or you're an idiot, which is kind of extreme, but I think that's just BS. Eight gigabytes of RAM is just fine, especially for Mac OS and M1. But if you want peace of mind with 16 gigabytes of RAM, go right on ahead. Storage, I wouldn't go higher than one terabyte simply because we can utilize external storage for much cheaper, but 256 is all right for most households. I would say just have labels for each external drive for siblings, spouses, children, or relatives that stay for eight months. I love you though. Anyway, I'd really only get external storage if you have hordes of data. 
maybe at a minimum get 512, but 256 I think is okay. If this is just for accessing the internet and doing work here and there, 256 and external storage is a great combination. So with all that, we're sitting at 1429, still cheaper than 1499. And I'll have links in the description below for the USB-C hubs like this one, or you know, if you wanna go overkill, not overkill, but if you wanna kill a machine and add more ports, a lot more ports, you can add the Thunderbolt dock. So hopefully you guys found this video informative. If you end up picking up the iMac, let me know your estimated arrival because it's showing July for me, which means Apple is really constrained on their ordering of their chips, or I should say their production of their chips because we're placing orders in May and you're not getting them till July. So it's a little over a month, but I do wanna say, keep in mind, Apple does throw out these very long extended um, shipment dates, but you usually get it like two weeks before. Anyway, I appreciate every sub, like, and comment. And as always, guys, much love. This is such a great machine.